In this video, we will speak about uh, intervals and the usual arrangement followed in each project. Usually, interval 1 is for boundary conditions. So if we made accept and click here, we can see the uh, monitor points. We can turn off the reinforcement layer to see clearly. So here uh, we can see the monitor points, uh, fixed contact, the master slaves, and monitor port for displacement, here for support also. So all these boundary conditions should be in the interval one. Then usually we uh, create new interval by clicking here and there's message copy conditions and the answer should be no. If we click yes, all the boundary conditions or all the loads, if there's loads in the interval, will uh, copy to uh, the new interval. And interval usually we use for dead load or self weight. So after we create it, we can go to define uh, weight for volume. As we can see here for concrete, there's like the weight. If we click here, we can see also there's like in this interval the loads. When we activate the new interval, all the new intervals we should activate this box add additional load case and new tab will appear and we should go to this tab and activate id it should be the number one it means like interval number one so all the boundary conditions will be in the new intervals like monitors or a master slave or uh, supports as we are transferring the boundary condition or loads from the interval one or the id which we, we need to the current interval now create new interval third interval and third interval usually it's for loads here we have like two vertical loads we can see by clicking here we can see like two vertical loads nothing else in this interval and we should remember as usual like add additional load case and uh, uh, activate ID number one. Vertical load is gradually increased while up to failure. So we need new interval. We called uh, overload and for example, number of load steps 150. And in this a new interval, we should activate user solution parameters. If we go to solution parameters from problem data here, we can see a neutral rough zone and iteration limit 30. But in overloads, we should activate user solution parameters and change from neutral rough zone to arc length just in this interval. So the solution is changed to arc length to be able to trace the uh, response also in, into the post peak regime. But the iteration limit in arc length should be minimum 100, 150. We can unactivate line search method to be the, uh, like faster. Here we can make it like constantly or normal update. But we should uh, be uh, careful if we have interface, it should be constantly, not normal update. In additional load case, we should add the, uh, the interval which we need to increase the load in it. So here in interval three, we had we have the loads and we need to increase the load by 100 uh, time. We can put the number uh, like the multiplier here. It's the same. Now we can activate mesh and uh, run the analysis. Now creating a boot file. There's message wrong. It's like no material for one element. The number for element is 8244. Material zero mean it's no material. So uh, we should go to see what, what happened there. We can uh, go directly or if, if we lost this, we can activate the mesh and uh, go to signal element and then put the number for element 8244. We can see here the element. So uh, we can check here if there's like two lines or two surfaces or what's going on. We can see here two lines. So uh, delete one line or make collapse or join lines it depends on the case and also delete the points for line 
and then create uh, generate mesh again and run the analysis again now the analysis by Athena console and we uh, explained how to uh, activate Athena console usually we use it to make the analysis uh, faster we can see the results in Athena studio for example we can draw deformation shape and uh, it's recommended to uh, use absolute instead of relative in deformation shape can also activate cracks or any results we need there's one note Athena studio for example if I want to uh, zoom in uh, for the beam uh, we can see here it's like hard to see the uh, scale after we zoomed in so uh, from uh, the setting we can go to legend background and make it white and uh, we can see now it's not uh, transparent so it's uh, easier to see the numbers in the scale when we are uh, doing like a zoom in or something like that in Athena Studio, for example, if we want to see EQ plastic strain, which indicates no concrete crushing since the strain less than uh, the epsilon CP value. So uh, from material parameters in GID, we need the epsilon CP value to put it in our scale in Athena Studio. First, go to uh, material parameters to check uh, our material draw concrete so this is our material now we should go to compressive and this is the value for epsilon cp after this value means the concrete is crushed so uh, we can put it in our scale by user define and then n coordinates the colors and for example i need to put the epsilon cp value here so it means like all the blue area in uh, concrete it will be crushed concrete so now we can see here uh, the crushed concrete in the beam we can also make number of uh, the scales uh, more now for example also we can uh, see or we want to see uh, the stress in reinforcement so we can define a new, uh, new window for structure and uh, define just 1D draw full model outline and then go to define stress draw iso area and here also here we need to know yield strength and uh, ultimate tensile strength so uh, go to GID again to uh, the reinforcement material parameters uh, to check the yield strength it's 500 megapascal and the ultimate it's 570 uh, so we can go back to uh, Athena studio and insert our value after coordinate the colors and we can put our value for example here so uh, it means like the parts in uh, red color it, it, it's like uh, it began to yield we can make highlights control value to put it also for also for compression uh, and okay so we can see here the scale it's uh, clear now we can see here like uh, the red bars uh, or the red area in the bars it began to uh, yield some users put in the first interval uh, self-weight so if we define self-weight for the first interval as we can see here when we define the loads it's working but we should be careful about the next intervals when we activate additional load case the multiplier here should be zero otherwise the self-weight will be repeated in each interval so multiplier zero if we put the self weight in the first interval with boundary conditions i hope this video was useful thanks for your attention and goodbye